Hello everyone and welcome to what I'm calling Fonts Workshop. The project I'm going to show you today is one I've been working on for quite a while now. Due to budget and time, I couldn't get all the parts of it at once. So this project has been running through my head for months now. But I'm happy I can finally show you all the project I named the Pestle Dolphin. Here's the GameCube that I'll be modding today. As you can see, it's not really in the best state right now. It is very dusty and the reset button stuck. Luckily, the other buttons work as they should. And of course, we'll need a wavebird. First of all, it might be a good idea to check if the GameCube boots up at all. Okay, it boots up as it should. And the game loaded, so we know we have a working unit here. Time to flip it over and start disassembling. The first few screws aren't just your regular Phillips head screws or tri-wing screws, but they're what we call 4.5mm game bit screws. After those are unscrewed, we can remove the top part. After clipping off the front and the back plate, and removing the heat sinks from the memory card slots. We can move on to the cooling fan. After removing that, we find... more screws. Oh well, we'll fix that with a time lapse. When the screws are removed, we can take off the disk drive. This reveals the next thing we have to remove, the heatsink. Next up, the ribbon cable from the controller ports. And then we can pop out the motherboard. Then just two more screws to remove the metal plate. And then we can unscrew and remove the power supply and all the other metal parts. And since we'll be painting this, we'll also remove the rubber feet. Taking the stickers off and the one on the bottom reveals a hidden message. Now that that part's disassembled, we'll move our focus to the top part. This part doesn't have any electronics, it's just the screws, the lid and the buttons. Back to the motherboard, we need to unclip these little memory card flaps. Be careful not to lose the springs. Now the last thing to disassemble is the controller ports. Now that everything's disassembled, it's time to give the shell a nice soapy wash and then to let it dry. As you can see, the grey plastics of this GameCube have been getting yellow over the years. That's why we're gonna do some retro brighting. To do that, we need a transparent container. Wrap some UV lights around it. And then cover it up with tin foil. When everything's ready to go, we put all our yellowed parts inside and then we submerge them in 12% hydrogen peroxide. Cover it up so the light can get out. Then turn your UV lights on and leave it alone for a few hours. While we wait for that, let's get ready to paint. Give everything a nice coat of primer. And 
then wait for that to dry. When it's dry, I apply a bit more tape so I can work on the design. As you can see, I'm going for waves. Why did I choose that? Well, you'll see soon enough. And now everything's finally ready for its first coat of paint. When that is dried, I can continue working on the design. Time to give that part some blue as well. While that's drying, I can finally work on the jewel of the GameCube. Originally, I wanted to order a custom one but I decided that it would be a fun experience to try it out myself. The dolphin I'm using in my design is the same one from the logo on the GameCube development units. And now you can see why I went with waves for the sides. I wanted to make a gradient with spray paint. I've never done it before, so it took a few tries, but I finally got there. I also experimented with spraying droplets of paint, which in the end turned out exactly how I wanted it to. After applying varnish and letting everything dry again, it's time to remove all the tape. I'm actually really happy with how the jewel ended up looking. And letting that original GameCube color come true through the waves turned out to be a great idea as well. There are some scratches and some cracks at some places, and some places are a bit rough, but in a way I like how it's letting the original GameCube color come through. After more than 12 hours, it's time to check up on the grey plastic parts. And it turned out way better than I thought it would. The yellow coloring seems to be completely gone. Now I just need to rinse the chemicals off of them. Seems like one of the flaps needs just a little bit more time, but I'll deal with that later. After cleaning all the electronics with some isopropyl, it's finally time to put everything back together. Before we continue though, this is the GC Loader PNP from Black Dog Technology and it's the reason why I wanted to do this mod in the first place. This amazing little PCB replaces your disk drive with an SD card reader. And to make it even more awesome, I got this GC Loader SD mount from LaserBear Industries. You might be thinking why I went with a green one. Well, I didn't pick the color. Laser Bear allows you to buy a flawed model with cosmetic issues. That way, nothing goes to waste and you can save some money. They made this really easy. All you have to do is screw your GC loader to the metal plate that was in between your disk drive and your motherboard. Then you slide in the SD extender and mount that to the same metal plate. Before we forget, quickly reassemble the controller ports and plug it back in. Then all you need to do is plug in your GC loader the same way you would your disk drive and then we can continue with reassembling the rest.
I also plugged in an SD to SP2 for some added functionality. Now for one other thing that would make this the ultimate GameCube. A Retrobit Prism HD. This adapter will give your GameCube HDMI output. Be careful though, it does need the digital AV out port. So make sure your GameCube is DOL001 because those are the ones with that port. Now it's time to plug everything in. Put the Switch software on an SD card, together with dumped ROMs from your own GameCube collection. And then it's time for the moment of truth. The adapter works, the software works, and the game boots. Everything is working as it should. This was the biggest project I've worked on so far, and I absolutely loved it. The games are running as they should, and look amazing, even on a 4K TV. Not only that, but you can still use the official expansions, like the Game Boy Advance player. I don't have that one yet, but I'll demonstrate with the LAN adapter. Anyway, I'm not only happy with how it runs, I'm also happy with how it looks. I'm so glad that the idea I've been working on for months finally worked out. And I'm looking forward to finally play my GameCube games. Thank you very much for watching.